Greetings, beautiful souls. How is everybody doing today? It's October 25th, 2017. Imagine we have about two more months and we will be ringing in another year. Everything's just speeding up now. Greetings, Okemia. How are you? How are you doing today? Greetings, greetings, greetings. <clears throat> I was just pulled to come on today. I wanted to just have a nice little live talk with anyone who's interested in speaking about ascension and awakening and what's happening, what's going on with everyone. You're doing good. I send you lots of love vibes today. Do you hear the background music? Step in the name of love. <laughs> How is everyone doing? How's everyone doing? How's everyone being? How is everyone being tonight? I wasn't planning this, but you know when the Holy Spirit just moves me to come on. Here it is. Here I am. Here we are. Here we are. What's going on with everyone? What's going on as far as your ascension? What's going on as far as your awakening? What's going on as far as shifting? What's going on with all the shifting? We are taking quantum, quantum leaps when it comes to shifting. You know, it's like um, we're really integrating a lot of the light and the, the dark, the shadow sides to ourselves. And that means that we're facing our fears hey lovely jasmine how are you precious how are you how is everything going what's going on with you is there a higher aspect of jasmine happening right now because you know we're all coming together uh with so much leaps and shifts and changes all around i am not the same person i was last week i could tell you that definitely not so I um, I just figured I'd come on and just start talking a little bit and I want to hear from everyone how are things going as far as their own ascension. I also wanted to let you know if anybody needs any guidance as far as what is happening in their lives. I do offer readings where I'm able to see things from all perspectives. If you're a twin flame, twin soul, I prefer to call it. I'm able to see it from all aspects and all sides, you know. This is one heck of a journey, I must say, and um, uh, where I'm being taken is even going higher in consciousness. And, you know, when I talk about how we, you know, you get to choose either way. And as far as how much we came in on this, you know, incarnated on this planet to descend in order to remember ourselves, because that's what we're doing. We're reprogramming and reminding ourselves of what and who we are and everyone in our lives every single soul that you come into contact with is a mirror they're all mirrors you know pay attention to your dreams pay attention to the signs pay attention to what comes out of each person's mouth that you're in contact with you know to see what comes up for healing to pay attention to we're in this time frame where the planets are really just coming across with so much stuff with what we're shifting and really uh Facing the dark side, just facing the dark side. I had so much, um, I reposted a video that I did um, last week. I wanted to verbally talk about it a little bit. Hey, Erica. Hey, I Ayuki. How are you? Yeah, time is changing a lot. I mean, it's like everything is just speeding up so rapidly, rapidly, rapidly. And it's like right now my soul just completely has taken over anything to do with my life. I just totally surrender to it all. Totally surrender to it all. And um, so what I was saying is that the video that I did, I know it was seven hours long, but it covers a lot of in-depth going into deeper aspects of how and where we're connecting to with the mother, the matriarchal energy, because, you know, we are connected to mother from the umbilical cord. <laughs> And um, I go deeper into all the different uh, analogies and experiences that we've had as humans on this earth and what it means as far as how we connect to the matriarchy, to our mothers. And, and the last time I did a Facebook Live, you remember I was talking to everyone about what is your relationship with, you know, mother? What's your relationship with your own mother? What's the relationship with your partner's mother? You know, if you're a twin or you're a divine uh 
partner, you know, because all of that is what comes up for healing on both sides. It, it's like, uh, especially for twins, you share the same soul frequency. And so anything that comes up for what you are to look at, uh, it's very much important for you to pay attention to what comes up in your dreams and how it relates to others and how it relates to that person and how you can shift out of it in a second, in a moment. Uh, depending on how you look at what you're experiencing, because the experiencing the experiences that we have is what is showing you what is uh, coming up for healing. That's the most important thing to understand. And it's not that we're just getting up living life day to day. And, you know, and then it's just looking at it from the 3D perspective. It's like everything is to be looked at from the sub what's within the subconscious mind and what's also uh, happening in your physical world and how you can bring it together and also, you know, walk through it with greater peace. So it, it, and especially with not having any fear around it, because, you know, we were taught that the things that we experience and stuff, that it's evil and it's dark. And all of these are just words that are put in place as labels to still try to understand what we are having. And then as we incarnate and have all these fears and stuff that has been taught to us, it just keeps repeating itself in a cycle. So, you know, I ask you, ask yourself how many of you, choose to want to shift out of the experiences that you're having that are repeating itself. And as you do that and you recognize what it is that you're experiencing, then you're able to shift out of it. And then you create a new reality because this is a part of our manifestation. This is a part of how we get to remember ourselves as the smaller microcosmic aspect of God. I was in such joy ecstatic joy you can see how much of that dancing and singing that I was doing because you know what my soul was rejoicing so much in my body because I remembered myself within my soul in the while I'm in the physical body and that state of blissfulness is where it takes us you know where we head to and then of course after three days then I st it started to come down and you know even more into my body because you know the soul can't come into the body all together all at one time because it it can um it can hurt you so it has to take time so as that continued to happen then i said well i know as soon as you are feeling that joy and you're in that i am presence the opposite shows up how many of you have had the opposite show up within the past few days how many of you have been looking at yourselves looking at the contrast feeling through it to understand what it means and how do you move through it into another stage of self-mastery Okay, so I'm going to read. Hello, Dorothy. Greetings. Sending you lots of love. Stephen Brown, from the third dimension right into the fifth dimension and the earth. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and I know, like I said, Spirit has shown me that by the time we get to uh, what we call the end of this year, um, the earth is ascending even to a higher state of, um, close to the seven dimension, something like that, because you know, every, everyone is on different levels and different pace and so on and so forth. And this is where we're really, uh, if you choose, of course, to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Where, what are you experiencing, Erica? Where, um, we're in just so much sovereignty and how do we honor ourselves and others while we're in this authentic experience and feeling because you know Jupiter is in Scorpio for a whole year and we're also in the Scorpio season and that energy is having you go deep into the subconscious deep into the depths of your feelings your emotions nothing is hidden any longer nothing everything is just showing up more and more as the veil is getting thinner and thinner you know as, as far as myself I could see right through so much when it comes to the human body, when it comes to thoughts, feelings, no matter what it is. And, you know, it depends on how open you are and how much you're clearing. Things are speeding up rapidly because sometimes at some point I said, I can't, I can no longer start speaking as slow and doing things as slow. I am multitasking. I am operating multidimensionally, multifaceted even more and more. And this is a part of what is happening when, with some of us who are on this path with our ascension and, um, and where it's taking us even more and more to where the soul it chooses to be, because this is the soul's desire. The soul has taken over most of us in the driver's seat. Doesn't matter what you think you want to do. Some of you probably do have to get up and go to work in the morning, but your body says, well, you're staying awake tonight, you know, and your sleeping patterns shift and change. You know, that has happened to me where I, I just the day before yesterday, 
I was there trying to do some readings and I was just knocked out, clothes on, TV on, everything. And it's like I was fighting and I couldn't fight anymore because at that point in time, there were divine codes that were coming through. And usually sometimes when that happens, it has to happen while you're in the sleeping state. I don't know how many of you, um, especially the females, if you've been feeling any solar plexus activity or womb, uh, almost like as if you're going through a moon cycle because that was also happening. So there was, there's a lot of um, healing that's taking place in the root chakra. Um, if any of you have had any dreams to do with that, if you see red or orange in your dreams, that's what that signifies. Because I had a dream to do with that with my divine counterpart. So I can let, tell you that that's what it means. So it's not just on the surface that things are happening. The things are going even deeper uh, within the emotions and the and, and the psychic and in the subconscious mind. The things that are hidden, the things that are going deeper and deeper and deeper that you can no longer ignore it and you can no longer act like as if it doesn't exist. See what I'm saying? So I would love to hear from anyone what experiences that you have been having. And um, if anything, if you, if, you, if you need just a little guidance to it, you know, that might help for anyone else who's going through uh, some shifts. And there might be some who are just awakening, you know, because not everyone was awakening at the same time. Because as we continue to uh, shift, and as you shift, you go into another level and another level, and this is how it 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 it, uh, it continues in cycles as you continue to shift. And as far as myself, I said to even Tavon today, I said I no longer choose to keep descending in consciousness and staying there, you know, because I'm still in this human vessel, and this is where I uh, I'm allowing myself to descend only at the point of understanding the human experience. And at the same time, I'm still divine and I'm living out my life multidimensionally and what I'm doing as far as co-creating my own reality. Okay. And there's a way to do that um, while you're going through this ascension, because, you know, remember, this is all an illusion. Every single thing that you're experiencing is all an illusion and everything you are experiencing that's pain or fear or doubt and worry all of that is coming from your projection, you see? And so look at your projections. Look at what you're projecting. Look at what you are seeing as far as what someone else's reality looks to you because it's all mirroring back and forth. That's what it is. And it, it includes even if you're going through illnesses, uh, if you're experiencing anyone who's uh, going through their own experiences and death and whatever's happening in your household, your marriages, your relationships with your jobs, like everything is just shifting so much when it comes to all of the relationships that we have with people. How much are you honoring yourself when it comes to dealing with people? Are you still giving? Are you still saying yes, 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 and not knowing when to say no? Um, are you honoring yourself by knowing when it's time to nurture yourself and to give back to yourself? Are you honoring yourself by knowing when it's time to be selfish and selfless and that you're not here to rescue everyone? I've had to go through that some more for myself. Yes, I have. So these are the things, you know, that we are working through, just different levels of how we are interrelating with one another, how we're interrelating with one another. So yes, Erica, self-mastery and chaos comes out of nowhere. And out of nowhere comes something and out of nothing comes something, you know, because we started from uh, the darkness. And I, there's a, a little thing that I recorded when it comes to the divine feminine. And from my memory, what I, I'm going to put it out there in a segment. It's about 23 minutes long. It's not seven hours long. I had a lot of, uh, <laughs> i tell you, I had so much obstacles to put that together. And it was just that energy of like interference that, you know, one would say, and it's that aspect of what comes through me and others as far as rejecting itself. Because, you know, when we are in that space of knowing ourselves, the opposite of that is what shows up as what we know, the opposite of who we are is what shows up in that space. As you say, I am, and you're putting something together, the I am not comes in and says, no, you're not, no, you're not. And this is for you to say, yes, yes, you are. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And so everything was just happening with recording and it was getting mixed up and 
couldn't get it together and it was just absolutely so frustrating it went on for two three days like two days practically and i still didn't give up i didn't give up and so whatever that was happening energetically within the next uh, the two days after that it worked out with it saving on my phone and saving on my desktop because both both of them were getting filled up okay so even now this this phone that i have it still is getting filled up because you see everything that happens within the self, the inner part of the self, the external aspect also shows something. And as we're shifting also the physical things in your world, like your phone, your TV, your computer, whatever, your gadgets will also start to, uh, to, to respond to what is happening within you. And it's not because of something else, you know, I would say, uh, separated in terms of, uh, evil and darkness and all that stuff because i want you to say there's two different aspects to this when we talk about darkness and and light because um hey shonda i miss you too i sure miss you at that supermarket i love you and um and so as as we go along and the more you are bringing in more light that's coming through to you is the more the shadow is going to come in because everything is just coming into balance Everything is just coming into balance within uh, ourselves and it starts to show externally. That's what it does. And when you get to that point where uh, you're repeating something and it doesn't affect you and you're able to, to balance out yourself emotionally, then you know that you are heading on that path with how much you are um, center, centering and integrating the, the light and the dark aspects of yourself. That's the best way that I can explain it. Cause you know, as, as, as each person goes along, you're going to have different experiences, different outcomes because the soul chooses to go through different experiences, different outcome. And that's why you're not to judge what someone may be going through. And a lot of us may be going through even more separation. There are a lot of different relationships that might be, uh, uh, coming apart during this time, during this, this season, because, um, everything to what is the highest and best for you is what's coming together. And if it's not the highest and best for you, it's going to pull apart. It's going to fall apart. And even with the falling apart, that's a part of what happens when we are fragmenting ourselves in order to bring ourselves back together again. So the person may just, or the event may just totally go away completely, or the person may come back, you know, or they may not come back. That's how it is. And also know that there are carbon copies of ourselves going around because there's, so much times that I see people that look like, or they're, they're saying things like me or like my divine culture, but I'm like, oh, woo, look at that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I said everything and anyone that is in your life, pay attention to what is being said and what's coming from your dreams, because it will give you an idea of what you are to look at, whether it's for healing or for shifting. That's how it works. Yes, Erica, I am that I am. The I am presence is definitely uh, coming in stronger and stronger as we as souls are shifting, like quantumly shifting with a lot of things, quantumly shifting, because I'm, I'm beginning to even see more and more how much more things are manifesting in my reality. And then it's all speeding up so fast, you know what I'm saying? And it's also not how you may expect it to be either, because uh, even something that I was listening to, it says there are a lot of us who are pioneers to this ascension and uh the way shores and so everything to what we're doing and being with what we're experiencing with shifting it's not going to show up in other you know for other people to really understand so even if someone doesn't understand your journey it's it's not important anymore to even try to explain it you know because i'm at the point where i don't even bother to, to explain anything to who i am i'm just going to keep being and that's how you should be for yourself because that's a part of being authentic Okay, no one is here to prove, have to prove anything to anyone, not one single soul. Uh, being yourself and being authentic to yourself is what's important for you. And like I said, even if that means that you might end up separating with from your family, your friends, uh, you know, co-workers, whatever, that's just the way it is right now. You see, and I choose to live and be authentically because if anybody knows me, like really, really knows me, I give no fucks what anybody has to say if you don't or do understand. I have none to lend, none to give, none at all, nada, zero, okay? And that's just the way it is. That's right. No validation needed. That's right. You said, Nikki, you kept getting that hit the other day, Waymaker. 
What hit is that? What do you mean by you kept getting hit? That hit the other day. Is it something I said and then you remarked to it? Because I don't, I don't, I wasn't paying attention. Hello, Diera. How is Diera doing today? What are you manifesting? What's going on with your ascension? As I'm asking anyone to, to tell me what's going on with your ascension. I've, 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 my sleeping patterns have changed. What else? Um, I started to get affected with my throat chakra, uh, this morning where I was feeling bouts like I was going to have the flu. And I'm like, well, I know it was something passing through my body because of a dream I had where I went to this church and I saw most of the people that I grew up with in church and, um, and they didn't want to hear what I had to say. And so I was like, well, well, to heck with that. I walked out and I was like, yay for me. Then someone was trying to attack my character today as far as who I am in the past because all of a sudden all these videos started popping up to do with Nefertiti and I was like hmm that's very strange I said well I know it must be for a reason and the thing played by itself without me touching it so once that happened then all of a sudden um someone was uh, attacking me not physically but uh with words saying I'm not Nefertiti da -la 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 -la, whatever and I was like um I was like, wow. And I remembered what Mike, the peace dealer said, because I follow him on, uh, on YouTube. And he said this week, you know, you, most of us are going to be going through things that could be like character assassination on, especially on social media. And this means that you, like I said, when you declare who you are, the, I am, you know, when you say I am that I am, then the, I am not shows up, you see. And so as the, I am uh, show, I'm not shows up. You don't have to necessarily stoop to the level of what someone else may say or not say about you. Because if you know that you're true to yourself, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. You don't have to validate it. You don't have to, uh, to show anything or anything like that. Just being yourself as you continue to be on that path of being who you are and authentic. What it does is I could practically just bring you even closer to who you are and, and the steps that you're taking on your journey as you are doing that, because it's almost like when, um, I always say, instead of me saying, how are you doing today? I say, how are you being today? Because when you step into the space of just being like somebody says, I know I'm so-and-so, or I think I'm so-and-so. How about just saying I am so-and-so you don't have to say, I know I am just say I am because when you say I am, you're just stepping into it. And you don't have to feel like, oh, I wonder what this person may say, or, oh, I wonder how this person might feel or whatever this person, no, because you see, it's all these fears of who we are is what we are. Um, the fears of, of, of who we are is what you're, you're trying to find out about yourself, you know, because even the book in the book I wrote about, uh, seek to find out who you were in a past life, because the more you know about yourself, guess what? It's the more empowered you become. It's true. The more you know about yourself, the more empowered you become. And I'm, and I mean, most of us already been going through a lot of past life memories and trying to put the pieces together. But if you know a name comes to you or something is popping up to do to you on a past life, go dig deeper, dig deeper. Because once you dig deeper into this part of yourself, uh, it's almost like, um, like you're, you're placing yourself on an even higher identity to who you are, because you see the parts of ourself that separated, of course, we have the names that we call ourselves and all these things. And it comes to a point where we don't even have to necessarily use labels and names, but you know who you are, not because someone has to tell you who you are and that you trust that and you stay and you walk in that path. And then you also start to acclimate another uh, part of yourself that becomes even more empowered. Okay. And that's what it does. That's what it does for you. So I'm going to read some, some comments and I'm going to that. Okay. Lauren, you've been really blunt. Oh girl. I've been even more blunt than I have ever been before. Blunter than ever before. It was like a huge surge that came into me, especially the part of myself as being the divine feminine, because I had so much backlash, which I know a lot of you have divine feminists. We had a lot of backlash also 
the um, being called witches. And of course, most of us were witches, but it's just because the ignorance of the human race back in that time didn't understand what it means as far as being a witch because of the labels and the labels placed on evil and bad and all of that stuff and understanding what the moon cycle is and uh, what part of ourselves come into balance as the feminine with the masculine. Because it's not it's not where we're, we're rediscovering ourselves as the feminine to take over anything. This is about coming into our partnerships and as we bring this together in partnership where we understand ourselves as the true feminine and the masculine also understand themselves with their connection to the feminine because they are also just as much those who are in the male bodies are carrying feminine and masculine aspect and, and at some point it's not even going to matter what body you carry whether you're male or female because it's a desire of the soul to experience love in the grandest way in many forms in many many forms and that's how it is so keep on with your bluntness girl because i love it i love when we are in the true expression of ourselves and i love when you don't hold yourself back to who you are allow yourself to continue to shine and shine through with both parts of yourself because a lot of times we you know some people feel like they can't be uh, you know, like a bitch one day, or they can't tell somebody off one day. Oh, I gotta be so proper. Gotta... No, if you have to tell somebody about them bomb cloud, you tell them, about, and you're still, you're still free. You still be free to who you are. Do you see what I'm saying? Because one way or the other way doesn't mean one way is better or less than the other. There's no such thing as that. And it's because of the feelings that people carry within themselves because they're not really expressing how they feel and that it becomes suppressed. And as you continue to suppress yourself, that's where the anger builds up and the frustration builds up. And then all of that leads to illnesses of the body and, and pain. You see what I'm saying? So I do implore everyone, if you haven't, if you're interested, to check out my video that I did post last week. I think it was last week. I don't remember when it was. I know it's long, but it goes into such great details to a lot of different dynamic ways that we're healing when it comes to the matriarchy because we are connected through the mitochondrial DNA. And that's through the umbilical cord. And remember that each time the soul has incarnated, we carry those frequencies through ourselves and through our ancestors. Okay. And as you carried on, you're passing on that same spiritual DNA through the next, uh, offspring that you may have. Okay. And it just passes on and on. So it's a lot of clearing that we're doing that even if your mother or father is deceased, you're still clearing that ancestral line. And that's why I say, pay attention to what is showing what's coming up for you in terms of, uh, your own, uh, personality, what has happened uh, as far as the childhood of your parents and how you notice it has affected them with how they raised you and so on, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to get to some more comments and go into that. Diara, you said you've been sick trying to eat some damn chicken yesterday. <laughs> yeah, even my eating um, habits too changed. Like, um, like two days in a row, I just didn't feel like eating. Is there anybody out there go through the same thing? Like you just don't feel like eating anything at all? No eating, no drinking. It's like I had to force myself to drink a little water. And and then I had maybe a little bit of fruits and stuff. But I went through like the whole, like I didn't even think about food. No food at all. No food at all. And even if that does happen, um, it's okay. Because, you know, eventually as our bodies start to evolve, you know, because our bodies are going through so much shifts as these frequencies are coming in. And that's why sometimes I, I would usually sometimes have breakouts come on my body, like eczema or something like that. And, um, and I use this cream, you know, a vino cream or whatever. And there's, there's times when you're going to be able to tolerate certain foods. And there's times when you're not going to be able to, even with vegetables, because as the, as we keep ascending, the body is going to, um, it's going to be more like um, trying to figure out what the word is because sometimes I can't remember the words. But it's going to be like um, uh, more of um, we're up to the point where we're even just drinking water. That's it. And we're sustained by the light, sustained by the light. And it's not going to be an overnight thing, but gradually as time goes on, uh, because even you might find yourself um, going to the bathroom more often to clear out your colon because you're carrying 
energy and frequency from other lifetimes and it's going to pass through your cold. You might find yourself going to the bathroom five, six times a day. It doesn't mean you're sick. Remember, a lot of you might be having symptoms and things that you go to the doctor and the doctor is not going to be able to find out what is wrong with you. And it's nothing wrong with you. It's just a part of the ascension. It's a part of the ascension. If you're having massive headaches, if you're finding yourself not eating or you might find yourself eating a lot. Some may still feel like they have to eat meat. Sometimes you might not want to eat meat. Sometimes you might want, not want to eat any vegetables or nothing at all. You might find yourself sleeping for 16, uh, 20 hours. You're getting downloads. You're getting downloads. And then you may find yourself you're not able to sleep at all. And you just feel like you're having insomnia. It's not insomnia. It's a part of the shifts. Eventually on the planet, we won't be sleeping at all. Seriously seriously, you won't be sleeping at all because all of these messages is what spirit showed me from two, three years ago when I was getting huge downloads of what it's going to be like, because we're going to be at a place where we're going to be doing and being differently than what we were limited with the human body. And it's a fact. That's what it is. So it says, uh, Nikki, you said when, when you said that there are certain people who are way makers, I was hearing that. Yes, there's a lot of us who are way makers because there are more people that are going to be awakening between, I would say, Spirit is telling me at least towards the end of the year, there are a lot of you who are going to be experiencing more deaths in your families and friends and circles. And that's just because some are choosing to ascend outside of their bodies and not within their bodies. There are some who are, um, just not wanting to shift. And as the planet continues to ascend higher and higher and higher, uh, anyone who's in resistant to change or resistant to want to shift with anything, uh, everything in their outer world is going to just seem quite different. So, um, things are even going to shift even with the, the, uh, the weather. When I say the weather, like some places where it used to be warm, it might shift to cold and somewhere it's cold. It might shift to warm. Everything that's happening on the planet is a part of what's what's uh, healing and and shifting internally with the weather systems and all of that everything earthquakes the floods the tsunamis um uh, all of the things all of the elements of the earth the fires that are happening now i heard there's fires happening in spain and portugal and it's not just in in the united states and we're also in the fiery season things are getting fired up also and i'm not saying this to make anyone feel any worse than what's happening in their life i have to explain this to you what is happening energetically because things are happening metaphysically just as much as uh, what's happening in the physical world. As we are bringing ourselves together back into that higher quotient of what the soul desired to experience in the body, that's the difference of what's happening during this ascension. And what Spirit is reminding me to say also is that a lot of us who are the way showers, we don't even know the full picture of when anything is going to happen uh, this week or next week. It's on a day-to-day -day basis because we chose to go through... Uh, the elements of what we call descending into whatever we're experiencing so that way we can guide others, you know, because if we had all the answers right away, then it, I guess it wouldn't be so much fun. You know, are you having fun so far? <laughs> I sure am uh, being sarcastic. <laughs> so, Diera, you said you ate veggie roti today and got sick eating there too much sodium. Kidding, Martha. Okay. Well, what I would do if I was you, Diera, when you can't eat any of the solid foods, because that's always definitely a sign um, when we're getting upgrades, we're getting upgrades and downloads. And all these upgrades and downloads is a part of what's coming through as far as the, um, especially the feminine codes, especially the feminine codes, because if you, if many of you have been feeling a lot of high heart feeling and blissful blissfulness and feeling joy. And I was feeling all of that, not because something happened. That is all a part of how God has this in a flow within our bodies. And when that happens, you, you know, you can't eat, you can't sleep. That's that, that, that blissful love feeling. That's what, that's what it does. And eventually can you imagine what it's going to be like eventually when we're just in blissfulness every single day, every day, that's what it'll be like, but we are going to continue to, um, to shift through the, the contrast, the opposite to who we are until we get there and we can be there completely. Because I'm telling you, when I felt myself feeling so wonderful Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I was like, Lord, I want just keep on with this. I want come out it at all. I didn't. I didn't want to. I was feeling so... I mean, even with the kids, I was just in joy with them, laughing, joking, everything like that. And I started to feel it start to come down. I'm like, okie dokie. 
And this is just a part of it from there because, you know, we're in that duality and the duality consciousness is what we are um, shifting out of and coming back into the unity consciousness. And so that unity consciousness means that we're going to understand each other in every moment, in every aspect, through all perspectives, my perspective and yours perspective and all of our perspectives. That is when we are ascending higher and as we get closer to the winter solstice, that's where another aspect of the atom is going to be um, shifting even higher. Do you understand what I mean by the atom? You know, it's it's uh, the, the part where they spoke about in the Egyptian terminology as Horus, as Osiris descended into the underworld. And then um, as Isis used the phallus to recreate the new man again, and we're continuing to, re continuing to recreate ourselves. We are continuing to die. And this part time frame in, with Scorpio, I'm not an astrologist, but I'm telling you the message that spirit is, is giving it to me now. As we are descending and we go down into uh, the, the valley of the shadow of death is what we call it, right? We will not fear anything. We will live. We will not fear anything. And as we descend, it's it, it, it's a part of the process to descend, to descend, to go into what some people call hell or uh, the experience of uh, going into the dark. And as you go into the dark, you're going to emerge and re uh, re emerge as a new person and and a rebirth. So and and it's gonna it's a rebirth, mind, body, and soul. It's everything. Everything. You know, how many of you out there know that you don't even think or even be the same thing as you was uh, a month ago or two years ago? This is a part of the shift, whether you're conscious of it or not. Okay, so uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. I'm going to go into the comments. Lauren, that's crazy. I was taking a pic of the moon yesterday. My family must have people who like more, are, are who like what? The, is, are you saying that they say because you took a picture of the moon, it means that you're you're more uh like witches is that what they say no they'll be all right <laughs> you know people you know what i think with somebody should look up the word with the meaning what witch means because you know i remember when spirit was talking to me about definitions because that's in the book and i used to tell my son brandon not to call anybody um that you he always used to call his sim and said you're an idiot you're an idiot and i used to say don't say that and then spirit said why don't you look it up and see what it means and when you look up the word dummy, dummy means someone who is ignorant and they're not allowing themselves to, um, uh, what's the word to, to, to understand and, or overstand anything. And when you don't allow yourself to understand something and to, to use intelligence, the universal knowledge, then guess what? Below that, you're a dummy. You're in a state of ignorance. You see? And too much of the human race goes so much into words and definitions. And because of what we were taught with the words and definitions, right away the labels begin. And people in their ignorant state back in those days, thousands of years ago, used to burn women at the stake. They used to chop them up, disintegrate, rape, all kinds of stuff just because of not understanding. And, and I remember, I will never forget this, and I'm not afraid to share this. And, you know, if my family members are listening, hallelujah. When I started out and I was telling my cousin, I said, oh, you know, we should burn incense and all of that because it heightens the senses, right? And, um, and burn candles because it smells good and it also heightens the senses. And do you know she really actually said that's not of God? And I looked at her like, wow, are you serious? And I stood my ground because I said, well, that's ignorance right there. That's ignorance right there. And, and I said to myself, I said, these are the things, like I said, that is in the genetic line, the ancestral line, when it comes to the perception about things and uh, the belief system that a lot of folks hold on to, especially when it comes to re the religious aspect and, and the fear that comes with it and the fear that comes with the names. And that if you say or believe in something, then you must be serving the devil or the demon, you know, and it's all that bullshit this is what I call it bullshit that has caused so much about why people have disempowered themselves because they don't take the time to seek to know what it is that really occurred then know your history know the true history not the fake things out there that they put out there for you to just gobble it all up every time and choose not to shift out of it and that's why you stay stuck so when you see me in my joy and shit and how i look and feel don't be a hater you just don't understand and you can choose to shift out of the concept and the thoughts 
and how you feel because it shows on the body. It shows within the self when you've shifted out of the old paradigms and the old bullshit. And it's the truth. And that's it. Because that's why it sets you free. That's right. It sets the captive free. That's my motto now. Set the captive free. All right. <laughs> that's it. I keep it real. Anybody who knows that, I keep it real. And I will continue to keep it even more real. That's right. The way I speak now. You're going to hear the same similar things that I'm speaking about in the book. And so now that I'm coming forth even stronger with what I'm saying, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. You know, because this is what I said to someone also. I said, when you have to make a choice about something, right? Even if it's something you're taught and it's an experience you're having with someone or an event or whatever, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel good or does it make you feel not so great? When you need to make a decision... That's your sign right there. The connection and the feeling that you have behind it. And not based on what mama said and daddy said and auntie said and, and all the other people that say things because they want to hold on to the same looping pattern of thoughts and beliefs and, and, and things that they've experienced and they want to place those curses. You know, that's the generational curse, putting things out there. I did a reading on someone, um, I think it was the day before yesterday, and... I asked her, I said, Spirit told me she had a dream. And I said, Spirit told me to ask you what was the dream. And the dream that she had had to do with um, her family. And there was something behind um, uh, something behind the relationship that she was having because she's a twin soul. And she didn't even know that. But because I could read the energy, I knew that's what it was. And I said to her, I said, you know, she was in a hotel room to meet with him. But then he didn't come forward. And I said to her, I said, you know, to me, what it feels like is like the inner child in her had to go to the hotel room so she could feel safe to be who she is. Right. And I said to her, I said, what I pick up on with the females in her family. OK, there's that matriarchal frequency again, passed on from mother to auntie to sisters and all them. That's right. And they they uh, hated men and they were all single and she said, oh my God, Sharon, you're so right because these, the names, oh, this one is a motherfucker. This is an asshole because this one left me. And so that consciousness continued to pass on. And so she was holding on to a frequency of believing and thinking, um, how she would want, you know, to be in her relationship and also with not letting down her mother and, and aunts and so on and so forth. And that's why I said it's so important to look within yourself to what your views are in terms of males and females, because everybody's been a male, everybody's been a female, everybody's been everything. Did you know that? You've been everything. We evolved starting out as rocks. That's right. And water, everything. That's why we're all one. If you don't believe me, check it out. Do your research. That's right. So let me see what else anybody says, because I just love these conversations. Does anybody want to come in and talk? Um, you'd be free to if you want to share something and and show thyself <laughs> so lauren you said oh no wait uh, okay lauren you said i said god created the moon just like the sun and the clouds that's right perfect answer perfect answer and you know remember what was written in the scriptures that god created this and that and god said it was good so therefore if it was good why was it labeled as bad but then again, when we take it higher, we labeled it as bad so we can get to remember that it was good. That's right. That's how it works. Erica, I have 10 classes left to receive your bachelor's degree for healthcare administration, but I can't bring myself to do the work. For healthcare administration, but I can't bring myself to do I'm not sure what is going on. Um, what I feel with you is that you feel bored, first of all. Um, Erica, I feel that you feel bored because there's something more that you want to incorporate to do with, um, healthcare administration. Did you, did you, I don't remember, you know, I don't hold all the information. Remember, did you ever feel like as if you wanted to, um, to have a healing center perhaps, because I feel that with you later on uh, opening up a healing center, that's where the healthcare administration is, um, coming in for you. And you don't have to wait till you get the degree to get started. If there's someone you can work with to start off with, with this healing center, then do that. Because I feel like there's a part of you that just wants to, to start living passionately. Because this is also what's happening now is that we're not to, to keep, um, 
working and doing things that is not passionate for us. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I just feel like a part of you is feeling bored with what you're doing and, and you just feel like you just need another direction or whether or not you're in, in the right direction. And I feel that you are, you really are. Okay. So Erica, you also said you're having issue with eating. Yeah, that's a part of, um, but when you're not eating, this is what I meant to say. I know sometimes I go off on a tangent when you're not eating, I would suggest that you make, um, or get, uh, the green, the green drinks or the, the, um, uh, what do you call it? You know, where you, the, the, I, I get mine from Jamba Juice, so sometimes I get the green drinks and everything that's mixed together, so you're kind of supplementing with protein drinks or something like that, and that can kind of help. So even if you don't feel hungry, at least you're providing the body with nutrients, okay? So that's how, what, you, what you can do. And, oh, so Diary said you, what, you was wondering why you was going to the bathroom. Yep, that's why we're going to the bathroom, darling. We're passing things out, so... And, and it's a part of the cycle, like I said, it's a part of the cycle. Yes, you've been sleeping so much. Oh, Nikki, your grandfather just passed. Oh, wow. Well, definitely I feel with him that uh, he is choosing to um, ascend. Did he, did he pass away peacefully? Like, was it natural causes, sort of? Because it just makes me feel like he passed away very... Um, peacefully that's what i um i'm picking up ar around him yeah and he was tired he was very very tired i just feel a lot of um like someone just dragging along you know what i mean that's what i get with him but he's going to be he's going to be guiding you a lot on the other side is what i'm hearing coming from him um, but he's, he's very quiet, gentle nature. That's what I, I feel with his energy. Very, uh, quiet, gentle natured. And, um, I don't know if he, if he had a business or something like that, because I feel like he was also a go-getter in his younger days. And he used to, 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 um, for me, he was like an independent person. That's how he makes me feel like he was an independent person. And I feel like he, if he didn't, then there's something that, he has for you to continue with the business or to continue whatever he used to do or have been doing or something, if that makes any sense. Okay. Ayuki, you felt called to do a coconut water cleanse for the one day for said. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cause every time that we go through, um, shifts, um, Ayuki with our bodies, um, then there's a shift in the diet because the, the body, the soul is trying to get used to, to, uh, to being in the body. Um, and you could even feel like, um, like, I don't know how many of you, like you felt like you, your body's like jolting or something like that, or tingling, more like a tingling feeling. Cause sometimes it takes you into like a tingling type of feeling. Um, like, like a lot of energy just coming through your body. You know what I'm saying? Almost like being charged up or, or something. That's what it feels like. Mm hmm. Okay. So Nikki, thank you all for whoever is joining, coming in and out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for us holding all this energy together. So Nikki, you said you've been all in the blissful love. Yes. You had a beautiful dream about the full integration of your union and the rise of the divine masculine effect. Wow. That's, thank you for sharing that dream. And you said it was powerful and full of unconditional love. Wow. That is very powerful indeed. Yeah, I've been having a lot of dreams to do with the feminine and the masculine coming together also. And like I said, a part of this process with coming into union is facing the shadow, facing the darkness, facing the opposing aspect of ourselves. And um, it's not just happening individually with ourselves, but also for anybody who's within your soul group. And, you know, of course, y'all are a part of my soul group. And, um, and so we're still doing it together. And that's why I like to gather up information to know what's happening, um, in each of our, um, dynamics, because as it is affecting me, then someone else is also being affected, um, and, you know, with their own journey and still bringing them, putting all these pieces together. So it, it does. And I know there's a lot of divine unions that are coming into place between now and the end of the year, because there's two other um, feminine that I have been in contact with. And one is getting married next month and the other one. And I told him, I said, remember when you do come into union, you're still healing and clearing through 
um, stuff. It's just that at that point, you're able to be together in the same physical space, you know, with your body and it's not as affecting because if you are still in that place where you're having anger and hatred or, um, resentment, um, or any of that towards your counterpart, then there's still more stuff to come up for healing. And I'll say this again also, which I've said before, it starts with the feminine. It starts with the feminine energy. Whatever you think and feel, the feeling especially the strongest, uh, your divine counterpart acts out on those feelings. And it is proven because I've seen it happen in my own life, okay? They act out your feelings and thoughts. If you feel affected with any of those emotions, that's that part of you to heal your emotional body. And this is where, um, where Pluto had came in and, uh, Scorpio has come in to go deeper into the subconscious mind for what comes up for healing. And you know, whether it's something you've experienced in a past life that's shown up and you might be acting it out in this life. And, you know, you can either, uh, look at it and face through it or so you don't end up keep being on that same, uh, karmic wheel over and over and over again. Everything trust, trust and know that spirit is always going to show you what is happening around you and to be able to understand it. But you have to be open. If you're not open to it and you close off your mind to it or you're in fear of it, you might miss the messages. That's where the sin comes in. It means missing the mark, missing the message and the sign that's shown to you to know what is happening dynamically in on your journey, okay? So just remember that. Uh, we don't just become healed right away. There's, it's a on, it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. Always, every single minute, every day. I don't know how many of you out there is like this. Probably you are like, it's almost every waking moment. I am processing through something with messages, signs, this, that, whatnot. And you're like, Oh my God. And sometimes you don't remember that you need to eat. You forgot you had to go to the toilet. <laughs> you forgot you had to make a phone call. How many of you have been trying to put messages in a book for things you need to do for the day and you're just not living a normal life anymore, what you call normal? It's not normal. The soul doesn't care. They don't care if you had to go to work the next day or if you had a doctor's appointment or, uh, 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 or something that you needed to do. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So, Diara, you looked up what which means a wise woman. Ha, ha, ha. I want to clap my hands, but I'm holding on to the device, but I clap my hands. Did you see that? A wise woman. See? And it was very wise for Diara to look up what a witch means. Because, you know, Halloween is coming up on Tuesday. And, yes, it's a commercial holiday. And for some people, they use it as a day for whatever they choose to want to do or they want to dress up in a costume. But a part of dressing up in costumes is that you're not really showing your true self. You're pretending to be someone else. So you can choose to pretend to be someone else. No labels behind this. And while you're pretending to be someone else, are you still holding that space of your true identity? Because there's still people out there that are not wearing a physical costume, but they're still walking around wearing masks. Yes, they are. They're wearing a mask on their faces and they're wearing a mask with what's in their heart. And so as the heart is working through purifying itself, because no matter what role anyone plays, because even if the, 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 the lowest scoundrel in the world is still God, the lowest of the lows is still God. Okay. And they chose to be in that space of who they are as the scoundrel, as the killer, as the murderer, as the rapist, as the, the, uh, the motherfucker, as the idiot, as the jackass, as the every name and label you could think of for you to remember who you are. So bless them, thank them, take it higher because they're reminding you of who you are and they serve their purpose. In all things, give God thanks and praise for what you are experiencing because it's a gift to you for you to remember who you are. And that's what it is. So, Thank you, wise woman, for looking up what the meaning of which is, okay? No labels, no fear. That's right. 
So it says here, Nikki, you said you feel like a completely different person. You feel like a completely different person. You feel even lighter than the last time that I interacted with you. You feel like you don't know yourself, but you feel... Well, you know why you feel like you don't know yourself? It's because you're experiencing yourself like you have never experienced yourself before. Does that make sense? When you reach to this stage where you feel so free inside, it's almost like you got rid of a big fat doodle. You know what I mean? You know what it's like when you're constipated and you just have to release something. And when you finally release the fears, you release the doubts, you release the worry, you release all of the bullshit, the fake shit out there and other people and all their crap. And you detach yourself from the outcomes and the circumstances and whatever the heck it is going on, you feel free. And that's because that your soul is experiencing this in your body, which it has never done before. Because this, hey, this ascension has never been done before. It was tried, but it didn't go too far. And you see, because most of us are more ascending and waking up and all that stuff, that's why it's becoming much easier for those who are on this path. And it's not as much uh, of the falling apart and the fragmentation, you know, because as each time when you try to ascend it, you know, in knowledge and thoughts and feelings and your body and everything put together. Remember, you have your mental body, your physical body, your spiritual body, your etheric body, astral body, all those bodies you're healing. And most people don't even know they're walking around with all these bodies, okay? And the next person, and the next person, and the next person. Because sometimes I said to God, Mr. But God, put enough people on the planet for, for wake up. Mr. Hold on, this I got take. And God said, don't you worry, my child. God is so amazing with how, you know, how Spirit showed it to me is that the person could be as low as they could ever be. And then there might be some that are just as awakened. And then they stay stuck. And then the person who was as low as they could ever be just shoot up just like that in consciousness, you see? So it's none of your business and it's none of my business how God does it, but just know that it's happening and stay in your lane to what's happening around you, you see? Because regardless of what title, whether you're a twin or a regular person, whatever, it's still a self journey. It's a journey back to the self. It's a, once again, it's a journey back to the self. Okay. That's what it is. I don't business. If you even living with your twin or your divine counterpart, it's a journey back to the self. So that's why you feel different, my dear. And yes, witches were healers. Yes, Dara and medicine practitioners. That's right. Because you see, we are at the point now where you won't even have to go to the doctor. Okay. You heal yourself. That's the way it was naturally made to heal yourself. And so that's why a lot of those holistic doctors, I know most of you are aware of this. Some of those holistic doctors are being murdered off and killed. But at some point in time, they won't be able to do it anymore. Don't vibrate to the fear of what's going on. Stop watching the TV and reading the papers with all the negativity and stuff out there to put fear in you. Because all of that is put in place so you come off track and go back into fear again and the control and power. But I'm not interested in talking about the politics and the government shit because we all know that it's still happening for whatever is to disintegrate, okay? Everything is happening within you. Take back your power. And you take back your power by not allowing yourself to be distracted by others and their thoughts and their belief systems and their customs and whatever the case may be. You see what I'm saying? You get to choose. The moment that something comes into your space and you start experiencing it, you have a split second that you get to choose and decide, do I choose to go into that space of what that person is saying and how it makes me feel? I choose to be who I am right now in the moment. And that's it. That's all it takes. Or you can choose to join them in their misery or whatever is happening. Okay. And I'm not saying not to honor how you feel, because that's the one thing I tell people. I said, whatever and however you're feeling, Honor your feelings because it's real for because we're still in this physical human vessel. And what we're doing is that we're allowing ourselves to live um, with emotional integrity where it's not used to have power over another and to manipulate and, and all of that stuff. You understand what I'm saying? There's a difference with, uh, with, between the two. Huge, huge difference. Okay. So, Angle, how are you, mama? 
You said these energies definitely been really, yes, the energies have been very high and blissful. Um, oh my gosh, it's such a wonderful feeling when you expect, you know what I'm looking forward to when it goes past three days. How many of you have had it and it just lasts for three days? Has anybody been able to feel that blissful energy in their body and it goes more than three days? That's what I'd love to know. Cause you know, I pay attention to everything, to how long it lasts, how it makes me feel. Um, it's almost like you're like, you're, um, you're just not in control in the physical sense. It's like your body just does however it chooses to do and to be through your your spirit and your mind has no time at all to try to say what are you doing where did i come from why did you say that why did you do no nope. it just it just is and that's where the power of of um mother and father god comes through to each and every one of us because that, that that's the true nature to what's happening is that we are bringing ourselves back together into the true divine sacred relationships that existed before in time before uh we descended okay and it is mother and father god's desire to bring itself together through each and every one of us and even for those who are resistant at some point whether they choose to or not they'll just be absorbed back into the light that's all so that's why it's no need to worry about and 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 you know if if you have uh, a family member that may have turned away from you and if you know that they may be passing on or they're not in agreement with you or anything it, it's it's like it's at this point where you just let go truly let go because it is still their choice to where they are and to who they are and what they choose to let go or not hold on to as i've stated before it's usually the ones who are over a certain age that they stay a little bit stuck in the belief system they just gotta hold on tight you know what i mean even if it's in front of their faces, what changes are happening. But you see, remember, they're seeing things from a different perspective. And even as they're seeing things in that perspective, that's still God looking at itself from that perspective. Okay. And when you realize that you have another set of realization that you're coming to and say, you know what, that's how that person chooses to be. But I choose this path to who I am and where I'm going, even if it goes against my mother, my father, my sister. Remember, Yeshua said, are you ready to be on this path? Because when you're ready and you, and it's not that you're just talking the talk, you're walking the walk. That's authenticity, where you're not just talking and just talk, talk, talk. No, you're walking it. You're the living, breathing embodiment of the Christ consciousness, okay? The Christ consciousness. And as you continue to embody the Christ consciousness, you're living and you're being in your truth, then others may turn away from you. And that's a, that's what shows your own true uh, uh, identity, your integrity, and you're living in your truth, okay? And therefore, you start to shine within yourself regardless of what's going on, that nothing else matters. Everything else will be and appear to be falling apart, but as it falls apart, it is still coming together. So those are, that's some words of wisdom I share with you tonight. And Diera, you said a lot of your friends from Old Group are here. Oh, welcome, Jasmine, Stephen, Danielle. Hey, Antonio. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, my brother? Win on purpose. Oh, Nikki. Okay, so your grandfather did that. That's why I felt um, he passed away um, peacefully, your, your grandfather. Um, I'm hearing from him. I don't know if he used to play numbers. Now, sometimes it happens where spirit will come to me. So he's saying to play numbers, okay? I don't know if there is, uh, um, if there's anyone in your family that shares a birthday or something, because I'm hearing something to do with a birthday or a, a, a date that's shared. Like it could be like, say, there's some someone in your family where there's a birth date and it's the date of an anniversary of a wedding or or something like that. And I'm just hearing to play those numbers in uh, in November, okay? November is very significant for you. So I'm just giving you that little tidbit, okay? I don't want to publicize everything, but that's a little tidbit that I'm getting. So um, I'm, I'm going to get to your comment because I, I see other people and I, want to, I don't want to miss out on anybody's comment. Steven said he can't type a comment. I think you need to make a friend request. Yeah, um... Steven, if you can't make a comment, then you need to send me a friend request. But I don't even know if I can get to the friend request 
um, while I'm on here now. Okay, Erica, so I'm feeling your boredom, and I understand. I understand the boredom. So being that you're feeling bored, Erica, Spirit is saying that you're feeling bored because it's time for you to move yourself to, uh, in another direction. Because, you know, usually when we're at a place where we feel like nothing's happening or... Um, uh, you're feeling stuck or something that's because your soul is getting is trying to get you to shift to, to to make a change with something so what i'm hearing like i said to still be on your path with doing getting the health education because that education itself is what um health administration excuse me is something for you to understand about the human body or something like that and just feel something to do with you and a center either work in a center even if it's part-time or something to gain the experience because i feel like it's going to be more fulfilling for you i feel that it's something that's coming out passion because you have healing hands i'm seeing that okay i feel the healing hands um nikki he was he definitely was that yes yes Nikki, he was a go getter. He was in the army. But okay, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Angle, your head has been tingling up much. And you know, um, Nina, you know that um, the baby is also bringing in a lot of colds into your body as well. So there's a lot of energy surging through you even more because of the pregnancy. So I just want to let you know that that's what I'm feeling. And and I know so many times you feel like you're gonna have the baby, but she needs to cook a little more. And, um, oh my God, it's, it's going to happen so quickly when you give birth to, um, to her. So just make sure that you have your bag packed already. Okay. That's what I'm hearing coming from spirit. And she's communicating with me now too. So she's saying, have the bag pack ready because I feel like you're going to be, uh, giving birth very, very quickly. Okay. Um, okay. Lauren, what do you think is going to happen while Jupiter score for Scorpios? <laughs> Well, Honey Bunch, Lauren, I'm not an astrologist, but remember, Jupiter is in Scorpio all the way until, um, I believe it's October or November of 2018. So it's so funny because I said to, um, uh, Lacasia that I saw a lot of Scorpio in her, uh, I felt a lot of Scorpio in her chart and she didn't know her chart. So I said, well, the one thing I know with Jupiter and Scorpio is that it represents what's expanding. Okay. What's expanding. But I know that there is, um, someone that did some, uh, YouTube videos and where Jupiter and Scorpio lies in their chart. So what I'll do is I will send it to you. So you'll be able to, um, to hear from, but energetically, when I pick up on Scorpio, Scorpio is the sign from what, from my memory and what spirit is telling me, Scorpio is the sign that, uh, brings things up to the surface, bring things out in the open revelation secrets are now revealed. Okay. Going deeper into the subconscious mind, pulling out anything that has been hidden in the dark. You know, because I think about, you know, like I was talking about Nina and, and the baby thing, is that anything that comes out that we give birth to starts from the dark, starts from the deep subconscious aspects of ourselves. And it's within that subconscious mind is how we give birth to ourselves, okay? That's the representation. So when I think of Corp Scor I mean, Corpio, Scorpio and being Jupiter and Scorpio, and we're in the Scorpio season, isn't that amazing? <laughs> That means that we're going even deeper. You know, even spirit tells me that we can go as deep as we go and we still go even deeper. There is always something that has a deeper meaning, a deeper understanding, and there lies the wisdom. Okay. So I will definitely send you that. Um, if I forget, just message me just in case, because you know how it is. Sometimes you say something and you forget. And I'm usually on top of things. Because like I said, I am multitasking like five, six seven, eight, nine things one time. I don't even think about it. It, it just happens. You know what I mean? So, okay. So Nikki, you said you saw your soul sisters and their men staring next to me as you're preparing to marry your twin. Is that a dream you're talking about? Or this is in the physical world. You said that you saw your soul sisters and their men staring, staring or standing next to you. I just want to make sure I'm reading it right. Because you know these written words. <laughs> okay, Ayuki, you said, on the cleanse, you felt like you were integrating so many energies. You felt so connected to all in your light language healings and others, of course, many multidimensional beings. Oh, oh. 
that you've never worked with before. It's been amazing. Yeah, because um, it's it's almost like as if each moment that we have with what's shifting and clearing within ourselves, um, it's like a domino effect. It's a domino effect onto others with um, how we're being. And as we continue to ascend and to shift, then it's almost like another person is feeling it and another person is feeling it. And that's one of the, uh, also one of the main purposes of, purposes of twin flames on the planet is that um, we incarnated to not only just bringing love, but also to bring things into place as far as the changes that are taking place and with healing, um, with love, um, also embodying that true marriage, the sacred relationships, you know what I mean? And we're also embodying all the aspects of ourselves that we had incarnated uh, to, uh, you know, who we were, who we are. Because who we were, we still are, you know what I mean? The soul never dies. We're here to show that the soul does live on and that um, we don't die. We just change form. And so what will start to happen as more twins come into even physical union, there's going to be more uh, miracles and manifestation of miracles take place on the planet that people have never seen before. And that includes healing with our hands. There's some who have, who I've read for that they have healing with their feet. Um, also, uh, being able to remote view even further hearing, uh, capabilities. And it's not to say it's just twins alone, but it's just because it becomes more magnified. Um, and that's another reason why some have not been able to come physically together yet, because there has to be a balance between both sides within themselves before they can come together. And even as they come together, remember I said that you're still healing and integrating, a lot of frequency, a lot of codes, you know, because we're receiving more and more divine codes as time goes on. Everything that is coming from these light codes and frequencies is coming from the planet Sirius. I'm hearing that some of it is coming from the Palladians. Um, it's a lot of information that is flowing through each and every one of us. And also another thing that's happening is that um, I know for myself is that we're able to communicate telepathically even more and more and more. So I'm already having that um, happening between myself and my twin. And it's it's, it's so uh, in, um, interesting and it's exciting. You know, it's like, I don't even, I don't even have to ask anyone, oh, so what do you think about this? Or what do you, no, it's like my own higher self, okay? Which is that uh, divine aspect of um, the Holy Spirit brings the information to me immediately. I don't even have to go on a computer. I don't have to go on my phone. It just, boom. That's it immediately. That is how powerful it becomes. And it's a matter of um, not just knowing that th that power that you have within yourself, but understanding it and not misusing it. Okay. So, okay, Angle, you said, oh my God. Yes, they do so much. Uh, I don't remember what I said, but I think I know what you're talking about. Erica, you said, yes, they do. You were able to recognize and say this is a reflection and told them all we need is unconditional love. Yep, that's the, one of the other reasons for twins is demonstrating unconditional love mm -hmm. the soul does not care at all what uh you feel that you want to do okay because you're not living we're not living life anymore in the regular ways we're living life adventurously now we're living life where certain things have never been done before that even some of the stuff hasn't even been written that's right and I even told my own children that the way how life is going to be eventually is going to be even surpassing the Jetsons. It's where you're going to, you're going to be able to fly because you know and remember that you can fly. And you don't need permission to believe that you can fly because you know that you can because that's the power that has been given to you from the moment of your creation. But if you believe yourself, you remember the Matrix when he had to go through his initiation and he had to fall from the tall building and it and everything was based on the perception of did he feel that he was going to die or did he know that he can fly and what was an illusion so you know but i'm not saying go on top of the roof and go jump off of it and see what happens you know because you still have to use common sense all i'm saying is what do you believe what do you choose to believe as far as how powerful you are and how you can manifest things because we're even going to be able to telekinetically move objects even that is another thing that is also returning um 
to uh, to a lot of us. Okay, Diara, you said um, Stephen wants to know why he is so forgetful lately. Um, but this is something that uh, with Stephen, this is something that just started happening. Tell Stephen, well, if you're listening, Stephen, to um, let go of fear, let go of the ego, because sometimes the ego likes to come in and say, oh, no, that's not it. And it's almost like, I think of the movie, The Nutty Professor, when he says, no, I am so-and-so, no, I am so-so. And so that part of him is forgetting because it's like a part of you don't want to look at certain things. And so the ego comes in to try to say, that's not it. No, yes, it is. And then it's kind of like a memory block or something. So I don't feel like as if it's anything to do with illness or anything like that. To me, it's more like a battle with yourself. That's how it feels to me, like you're battling yourself. And so what happens is when you're battling yourself, you just shut down and then you're not remembering. And a part of it too is, is what's happening with the shifts to do with your own ascension. And a lot of it has to do with letting go of old beliefs, letting go of, oh, ooh, look at that. It is where I am. It is 1010 right now. We are still in that 1010 portal. If any of you have been seeing 1010, that's what it means. That That's a energetic, powerful gateway, you know, as it re represents the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the oneness, the alignment of ones and zeros, okay? That's what that means. Okay, Nikki, so your grandfather used to play numbers. Okay, so that's what he was showing me, honey bunch. So you look into who um ha shares a, a birth date or something like that because he's showing me for you to play um the numbers okay 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 you said the dream that you told okay i don't remember uh, unless you want to talk about it i i i don't remember what i read um i don't want to scroll up and get confused because sometimes the written words can get to be kind of confusing that's why i'm so much uh I, I talk about communication that the highest level of communication is when you're face to face and of course when you're verbally speaking to one another which sometimes that can cause chaos too but at least there is no room for any misunderstandings yes okay lauren you said thank you. you've been trying to manifest something for a while now i'm trying to keep patience and learn that it's a reason why i'm waiting okay well what i feel with you lauren is that don't try to manifest just manifest you know a lot of times we tend to want to put um something uh how do i word it um in order to manifest it like how when somebody says do you feel or believe that i can create a car or do you say i have a car there's a difference between saying i have a car or i know i'm going to get a car you know what i mean and so this is about knowing that you just say it and it is so on earth as it is in heaven, okay? That's the power of manifestation. And you are aligning your thought about what you're creating, feeling and knowing that it is done, not concerning how it gets done. And you're aligning with that frequency of feeling and knowing that it is done. And therefore you start to... Uh, uh, work with the universe when the universe will say, okay, do this, do that. If there's nothing for you to do, then that means it's, it's you let go and you detach from the outcome. And that's how you manifest. Also, I have said this before. Sometimes when we're manifesting, sometimes we think, oh, we got to keep repeating it over and over again. Oh, please, God, please, will you do this? I thank you. No, sometimes you just need to say it one time and that's good enough because you're aligned with it already and you believe and know that because you can feel it and therefore it is done and you don't have to think about it anymore and you let go, you let go and you detach once again from the outcome knowing that it is done on earth as it is in heaven because as above so below, you are already creating it within your reality by putting the thought out there just like what you know God did in the beginning, right? It was a thought and then just spoke it out there you know your word is your command you like your that's how you're that genie in a bottle you're that genie in a bottle and so as you speak it out and then you align with the feelings that you have about it and then you know that it is done and you let go and let god and you know it is done it's like something that that works its way through your solar plexus that's why i know that spirit was really doing a lot of healing to do with our solar plexus activity even and in including 
um, healing and shifting to do with sacred sexuality, which I'll save that for another time. But that's another thing that we're healing too, also during the Scorpio season. Yes, ma'am, because I know it also deals with um, where, what our views are when it comes to sex, uh, sexuality, and how that connects us to the divine and coming back to the purity of sexuality as well. But like I said, I'll discuss that another time because, you know, <laughs> I could go on and on. Yes, dear. He said, you and your twin are telepathic. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. On purpose, it's like no privacy. I know. So, but isn't it interesting how you can have these conversations telepathically with your twin and you're talking to yourself and you're hearing um, yourself telepathically what is being said? It's just amazing. Even in the dream state, I heard my twin telling me how he feels about me. And then my soul responded to it because it's a soul frequency. It's a soul connection. And that's why that part of ourselves is where it's not hidden. And, and, and we become naked to our soul with one another. You see, that's how it is on the other side. There is nothing hidden on the other side. Nothing at all. The only thing that will remain, I would say, more sacred in privacy is sacred sex. That's the only thing. And that's what's always been shown to me by spirit. So, okay. All right, Nikki. So, yeah, you sent me a message. It's a card that you... Oh, shoot, Lauren. You said that's a... Well, see? Now, I didn't know that, but that's spirit. So, you know, it is done. Were you thinking of getting... Um, I don't know why I see red. Like, I, Or do you have a red car? Was it a red car or a burgundy car? Um, but you're going to get the car. Just... You just... Remember... We do not necessarily have manifest things based on having money also. And so we tend to attach money to how we achieve things in life. Sometimes we also will manifest things not based on having money. Okay. It can come to us in so many myriad of ways. And so that's another key thing when it comes to manifestation. Okay. So I don't know if anyone else has any questions or anything you think I haven't said that you would love to hear. Speak now. Speak now. <laughs> Speak now. It has been so, such a pleasure for me to, um, to share with all of you and to talk um, tonight um, about a lot of these things. If anyone is interested in a private reading, um, please feel free to message me. I'm also... I've been putting it out there. I don't know if there's anyone who's interested who's a twin uh, flame, twin soul. And I would like to have like, if you were interested for me to have like a private, like, um, like a private um, sessions with a group of you, like maybe about uh, no more than 10, um, which would be great because a lot of times um, what it does is that it also can help someone else who's also on that journey and um, it helps you to understand even more because a lot of times I know there's some people who feel a little bit confused about their journey as a twin and there's some who may be starting out or some who may be on the journey but they're not fully understanding it because it's not a regular relationship, you know. It's, um, it's a divine sacred um, partnership. It's a divine sacred relationship. It's everything that mirrors between um, souls and... Um, a lot of times I know some people feel like they're going crazy or they're wondering if they're, if it's their imagination. No, it's not. Okay. Because remember that things that are happening now on the planet, it's not based on the regular ordinary stuff. And you may not necessarily find it on the internet. You may not find it in the books. You may not find it through someone else because spirit wants us to go internally now to go within, to go within and to seek the answers within ourselves, because that is the true connection to, to God. That's the true connection to the divine on where we are led in knowing and trusting that everything, everything is coming forth in, in, in its divine timing and in its divine way for each and every one of us. And we all may be on that path. We all are on that path back to God. Okay. Because it is a journey back to God. The, the journey back to the self is the same journey back to God because we are the aspect of God that is showing up in the physical world that has been the true desire of all of our hearts. Every single soul who is incarnated now 
we all desire to incarnate here. Okay, we all desire to come back here to know ourselves. And we incarnated and we left and said, oh, I ain't coming back. And we come back again. I said, Oh no, we can't. and you still come back again. You see what I'm saying? And I know how it feels. I know sometimes you feel like, what the fuck? I don't want this anymore. I don't choose this. I don't choose this. I don't want this. I want to get out of here. No, 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 no. We have all these thoughts. And I understand. I truly understand. But just know this sister, this sister right here, she know how you feel. And that's why. We come together, we all gathered here together in this holy matrimony. This holy matrimony. Okay, this is the holy matrimony. This is the um the the coming together. This is the union. This is a part of the union as we come together and uh help to lift each other up and to empower each other. We empower each other as brothers and sisters, not just sisters and sisters and only brothers and brothers. No separation, no separation. This is a coming together and how we can help one another and assist one another through the pain, through the sorrow, through the laughter, through the cussing, through the daintiness, through the beauty, through the ugliness, everything, everything, nothing left out. So if anyone is interested, like I said, um, with me having, you know, to attend whatever the classes that I would like to have to help you, I'm offering 20 minute um, readings to go along with it. Because, you know, even as you go along on this journey, things are shifting so much and so dramatically that sometimes you need someone on the outside looking in for what you may, you know, understand or choose to be with shifting or whatever at the moment that you're experiencing it. So, all right. So what I will do, since no one else has any more, any, any questions or anything else that you'd like to discuss, I'm just going to say a little meditating prayer and of course some language to come through for each and every one of us because i'm just feeling um so much shift and even more shift happening right now as i speak um and scan through everyone who is listening so i want to thank mother father god for bringing us here today on this lovely day october 25th 2017 as we are in the this time of um changes and more changes and shifts quantumly um everything that comes together for us in our true authenticity and uh through these leaps that we're making quantum leaps i thank you for all these divine unions that are taking place within ourselves and how much more balancing is coming in for us and strength and how much more of a connection we're making to one another and that we are honoring each other for our similarities and our differences that we know how to move forward with divine wisdom and that anything that we do, that we're doing it for the highest and the best for ourselves and each other. That we also use our power of discernment to know when it's time to let go and when it's time to hold on, when it's time to say yes and when it's time to say no. I thank you for us understanding and coming with divine wisdom with everything that we are experiencing. I thank you for love and for light and for strength that we're able to also understand what we are shifting with the light and the dark aspects of ourselves, the shadow, and also what shows up as that bright shining stars that we are. I thank you, Mother, Father, God, for everything that's coming through for those who are uh, also experiencing certain difficulties in their lives that you also remind them of who they are and that they do find the strength and the healing and that we're able to see through everything through this veil and truly understanding what it means and that we do not put ourselves in a place of fear and panic and that we know who you are and remember who we are in respect to that. And so as I speak and i speak out to each and every one of you to come through with your divine healing as we continue healing uh in every moment that we are able to and to recognize what is it that comes up for that healing and that we know that everything that we are bringing forth in bountiful blessings that is coming forth in powerful magnificent manifestation above and beyond our expectations I thank you so much for how much we're grounding on this earth and shifting with so many souls in so many ways that even if we don't even know what to say, that just who we are, being who we are is enough for what is 
uh, is happening for these shifts to take place. And so, San Narabata Kito Sikita, La Pekin, Mene Pito to Shipetembe, Alamina Botori Bita Patachan, Naripete Kanare Kisanto Shikitan, Mele Pita San, Narapoto Shui, Apata, I Ramatana Beta Kanda, Kashaina, Doi Sa, the Petitu, the Palapata. I number the Konimire Se, the Kandar Shun, Narabata in the Kinun, Narabata in the Ice, I shine the Kudita, the Wood, the Marata, the Wood, the Ba. I never the Kotu Bikin, but the Koshula Beket, or Kurubeket, or Koshula Beket, or Kurubeket, 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 or Ah, in da da ba tum da da ba tum da da ba tum ba da ba tum ba. Ah, in in in. And just take a deep breath. And anything that you feel that. You have held on to just go outside right now and release it. Release it and let go. And just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit just continue to permeate through every cell of your body, your mind. And knowing that no matter how it looks and feels that all is well, all is well. So I send you so much infinite blessings and peace to each and every soul. I look forward to when I join you again. And as I stated before, if anyone is of need or any assistance, please feel free to reach out to me. I love you so much. And so it is. I say namaste.